Hi, everybody. Welcome. Rock'em Sakura. Rock'em Sakura 2. I told you you'd get it wrong. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. But I, I did it wrong in the intro. A lot of curse on your existence. <laughs> uh, Rock'em Sakura. No, as soon as you said it, it was like, like, it's like Rock'em Sakura Robots, but Rock'em well, that's Sakura. that's exactly what I was going to say. Now that I'm hearing it pronounced correctly. Or is this the, an easy, an easy way for you guys to pronounce it is like soccer ball or like your socks. Or uh, just Sakura. just say rock like RuPaul does. Hey, rock. Well, You're welcome, like, hey. rock, Thank to you. Dragon Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm a big fan of the show. Oh, thanks. Really? No, I've never seen it before. <laughs> I'm really, say. really glad to be on here. Hold on. Let me roll an uh, insight check. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that was not uh, truthful. But yeah. You will be after this episode. Yeah, but my charisma is so high that you're not going to get mad at me. <laughs> That's true. That is true. We no, are not going to get mad. I am sad because we had uh, 10 minutes prior to turning this on live of a really good conversation <laughs> oh, about <this> lunch <laughs> when you were a kid and cereal. Let me just say this. And... If you like Raisin Bran, um, you're an you're an idiot. <laughs> We are getting all charisma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I I like you would like raisin bran the way I like raisin bran covered in sugar. Trust me. Well, yeah, if your if your proportion of raisin bran to sugar is 1 to 3, then obviously yeah. it's going to be good. That's yeah. how I drink my coffee. That's the only way I know. That's how I yes. drink my coffee too. My coffee is less coffee and more um I'm I'm Asian, so uh, dairy is the um, the crux of my 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 race. We're all lactose intolerant, so um, I wake up in more ways than one. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, I was in a Folgers commercial, and they had to cut it, it too graphic. <laughs> as... <laughs> I they couldn't <laughs> even hear the tune in the back. But they could oh, hear man. the toots. Yeah, <laughs> here's a toot. See, so you could be the spokesperson for the Squatty Potty, which was also something we talked about prior to going live. Exactly. I'm on a Squatty Potty right now. <laughs> <laughs> I keep it. It keeps my posture well in front of the green screen. I'm also using the bathroom. <laughs> Whatever I works had, for you. It helps. I just have no fiber in my diet. It raisin um, bran. Raisin yeah, bran would help with that. You need the raisin bran. That's true. <laughs> Give me those gross, gross raisins. <laughs> it's really the bran. Just cut out the raisins and just go for the bran. I feel like if I ever have kids and I need to punish them, then raisin bran is more, um, it, it is more in line with what I would do rather than like corporal punishment. Like, why spank your kids when you can force them to eat um, bland breakfast cereals? I think that's truly horrible i just did that in fact my kids are like <laughs> my kids are like i'm hungry i'm like there's cereal right there just eat it <laughs> eat it oh that's like that's our first choice captain crunch and oh, then lemon juice cut up your <laughs> mouth <laughs> lemon juice. that's true horror well we are talking to you rock not because of breakfast cereals and squatty potties but because oh, no. of your fandom of dungeons and dragons uh you've been playing for a long time uh, yeah, I've been playing since 2009. Um, what really got me into the series was, um, well, I mean, I would frequent the local comic book store, and I thought the nerds there were very cute. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm heavily attracted to orcs, so. Uh, <laughs> where, where was that comic He's book store? Uh, so that was in Santa Clara. That was at, um, it was called, uh, a shop called Isle of Gamers. Nice. And uh, pretty much, it, you know, it's your typical uh, comic store with tables in the back where you can do role playing or board games, wherever you want. And so you started going there and seeing the people playing D&D &D and you're like, I want to I do that? I did uh, mostly because, so I do drag now. And drag in a sense is like its own um role playing in real life and something about role playing or playing another character or creating a fantasy had has always been a fan like a fascination with me so um the game naturally just kind of pulled me in i was also really into uh community by you probably got you 
you hear this a lot, you know, community, Dan Harmon. The show, yeah. yeah. They, had, they had the Dungeons and Dragons episode, and I followed Harmon Quest, or uh, Harmon Town, which was his podcast um, with Dungeons and Dragons. And um, I also watched his show, um, uh, Harmon Quest, which is the animated Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. And um, yeah, around that time, I was very, very into Dungeons and Dragons, mostly because I was not super close with the gay community at the time and i feel like i was more in tune with the nerd community if that makes sense yeah yeah absolutely and so, so what was your what was, what was your first experience playing like what, what did what how did you jump in and and uh, uh you know what was your characters what was the dm like oh my god my first okay so my first game that i had was actually before i really started to get into dungeons and dragons it was in like Is that my your dog? Freshman year of high- yeah, what was that? Was that, that a- was my dog. <laughs> wow, he really likes. <laughs> How much rain did you give that it's poor the child? Rain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, busted. I was punishing my child. I'm calling PETA. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my freshman year of high school, I uh, went over to a group of friends' houses, and um, they were they were new friends, so it's like a friend of 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 a friend that you met at an anime convention. Okay. Um, so they were playing Dungeons and Dragons, and they wanted to know if me and my other friend um, would join their campaign. And I had never played before at all. I had ne- my only experience with Dungeons and Dragons had been that horrible movie from the 90s oh yeah. yeah so that is not a good introduction that was a big big blow to the franchise um so no comment there but I, yeah. you know, <laughs> my nodding can do enough right and i wasn't very like super openly gay when we first started playing so my character was like a big a big buff human yeah this is like bland vanilla um character like a big buff human and a fighter um and there was like literally no defining character traits other than the fact that like they were very stoic and they were really strong that's it so like it's like how when furries get into the furry fandom and their characters are a husky <laughs> like that's 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 it's a joke within the furry community don't don't ask me how i know i'm not a furry but <laughs> <laughs> when you're a nerd, you know a friend of a friend of a friend who's who's a furry. So uh, these jokes rub off on you. Um, so <laughs> well, I mean, what you're talking about here is really cool because there's so many intersectionalities between drag, between D and D cosplay to uh, to the furry community. So, you know, there there is this uh, I think through it's line through everything. Connected. It's it like is. the Da Vinci Code, but with <laughs> things that people don't care about. <laughs> a lot of people care about them though right i know it's true i care about it too <laughs> yeah. um oh. but uh sorry go ahead go ahead no i want to hear the the rest of, of about this character and how long you played this character uh i literally only played that character for about uh two weeks and then uh, we all kind of stopped hanging out but essentially in the oh. course of three weeks i got to know that that group of friends was very homophobic oh, oh. Um, it was very mis- well, this is in early high school too, so homophobic, misogynistic, and their campaigns revolved a lot on like self-satisfying, self-gratifying, like um, I don't know, like overt shows of macho ness. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, which is why I didn't play Dungeons and Dragons for a long time um, until I had graduated high school. Um, the main thing that kind of turned me off, especially was like being like an effeminate, um, you know, a uh, gay person. Um, the, the game itself did not feel like it was very, um, open and inviting to like LGBT people. Um, which is, which is not true at all because it is, it's open role-playing and RP and it, it truly is. It is the people and and the community around everything that kind of brings you into the game, um, especially now. A lot of like a lot more people um, who are LGBT 
LGBTQ plus, you know, um, and and women like uh, cis women are all playing Dungeons and Dragons more um, because nerd culture is changing yeah. and we're holding people more accountable for um, misogynistic, chauvinistic or homophobic or racist behavior, which I think is cool. I agree with that. Um, but I'm so this character though, I'm like kind of fascinated by <laughs> why you, like you did you feel like knowing the group that you were playing in? Did you feel like compelled like I better create this like super buff character? Or did you feel like it was sort of like a mask? That's exactly for, like trying to like hide yeah. your that own was identity? definitely like a trying to pass for straight sort of thing, and I was like, what's straighter than a big sweaty <laughs> humanoid with a long broadsword? <laughs> and there's like no points in acrobatics. There's no points in charisma. It's yeah. like all no strength theatric. and dexterity. Um, uh, I, I basically what it was was I was trying to like prove to everyone that I wasn't gay. And it's it's so different now because that character was I I can't even remember his name. It was it was so many moons ago. <laughs> uh, I think it was like 15 years ago. I'm old now. Um, <laughs> but the, the character all. was so bland that I, I can't even remember. And it also just was not indicative of who I am now, right? which is why I, I can't remember anything. And now when typically when I RP or I do Dungeons and Dragons, I create characters that are either androgynous or characters that are women. Um, it's mostly because I identify more with female or effeminate characters or non-gender descript characters i um you know what you know when you rp it's so important to kind of have a character that you can play and that you can relate to in some sense unless you're a really really good actor um i i typically lean towards um like female characters like that i can relate to you know yeah also yeah. Uh, i like co the costumes better <laughs> well no i mean there's that yeah. Well, and we it's funny that you meant, you know, that mentioned that you were how creating these characters and how you've gone to ones that were more aligned with, you know, who you who you are now as a person uh, or out, out now as a person, but you know, it's interesting to have that progression because I think a lot of people use the role playing of Dungeons and Dragons to to experiment, to try out, to see like, you know, this might be something that had been repressed or or just they didn't know about themselves and then through play of uh, characters that are different from them they realize that it is much more important and part of their psyche than, than they ever would have thought. And if they didn't have the prompting that Dungeons and Dragons can provide in these, in these type of roles. Exactly. Well, when, when I, um, you know, I started playing Dungeons and Dragons more like maybe two and two or three years into like playing a bit every week. I, I came out as a, as a halfling, <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as a sexy little halfling. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> And now people I know. Almost, I almost said a dwarf, but um, <laughs> I think halfling is more funny. It rolls off the tongue a little bit better. Yeah. Um, yeah, but typically all my characters now, because that character was very stoic, didn't have much of a personality. All of the characters that I create now, um, I, I don't typically hold on to characters as much. Uh, uh, like I don't do a lot of campaigns weekly anymore. You know, she's booked. Um, she's <laughs> You know, she's, she's got to make money. Uh, I'm just wiping off my eyebrows. I have a little bit of modesty right here. <laughs> um, but uh, all my characters are, are all women, but they're also, I typically like chaotic magic users. And my alignment is always like chaotic neutral. I love to impede progress in a campaign. <laughs> That is my favorite thing in the world because I am a liability in real life. And <laughs> I, could, I need to play a liability in the game too. Like what sorts of things do you do? Um, typically I do magic users that have, um, they like randomized spells uh, where it's like the DM will know my move set or will know my spells and they're like size changing spells or like just odd morphing spells um so the, the dm will usually uh roll for me and and like do whatever is more um i would say because i do a lot of live D D or like 
D and D where it's like someone's watching and it's more of a performative experience. So um, whatever is better for the campaign. Right. So do you do you like rolling on tables? Because that's do I like my favorite thing I've, to do is like a table. Just give me a good table. I just I just want unpredictability. Um, I do. I, I do typically roll on table um, when I play uh, like personal games, but usually uh, uh, I don't roll on table when uh, we do performative stuff. Because sometimes if you know if you only have a two hour show and you gotta get you gotta get there, you can't just sit there rolling. Sometimes you gotta be like, oh, whoa, a natural twenty. Oh, that's cr- on the first roll, that's insane. It's oh. Never like that. yeah. I mean, I'm not cheating, but, but you're you're moving the story exactly. Yeah. The opposite of what your character would do, who would yeah. probably try. To... <laughs> exactly. I need to move the story so that I can impede it. Right. <laughs> you're like, I'm tired of impeding it in this way. I want to yeah. impede it in a different My way. My mantra is be the roadblock that you know you've always been. <laughs> I mean, sometimes your fantasy and your reality do intersect in that way. Yeah, that's beautiful. It is. Thank you. Thank that was you. gorgeous. That was a great mantra. <laughs> if you put that on a t-shirt, I will buy I it. I think I am going to. I'm going to go to Cafe Press right now. Yeah, if you one. put it on <laughs> Cafe <laughs> Press. <laughs> 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 Let me just get on Redbubble. Um, shower curtain. I mean, on my, no on my face. <laughs> I'm changing my live journal banner. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I ate white bread, peanut butter, and fluff sandwiches as a child. Okay, <laughs> that is I mean older that's than insane to me. Yeah. Well, when did you? So when did you get into drag? When did when did that, you know, uh, become uh, you know a big part of, of of what you're doing? Well, I got into drag five and a half years ago. I know I started on my birthday, mm-hmm. um, but I mainly got into drag because I, I had seen RuPaul's Drag Race before. Um, well, question: Have you guys seen RuPaul's Drag Race? Obviously, I have, but I've not seen the, the most recent season. Okay, that's the one that I'm on. I know, so, I know. So you're not apologies. doing your job. You I know, know you're interviewing. Just watch one episode. I just get. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's on. It's on Philo. Uh, <laughs> well, I got into drag um, five years ago, and I had known about Drag Race. I'd watched Drag Race and the way that the girls were depicted on the show and the type of queens that were being shown and being cast were queens that were into the pageant scene. Um, There were some female impersonators. There were a lot of uh, girls that looked like, um, like picturesque kind of examples of like women. And there weren't like overly drawn, cartoony, campy, um, like, you know, like, girls portrayed on the show and I was not interested in creating the illusion uh, like uh, like a female illusion um I um I was an illustrator before you know I'm a freelance illustrator and um freelance animator before um I started doing drag Uh, I also worked in fast food for for 10 years so I mean that's I mean that was the main thing that brought me money but you know I've always been creative and I've always um, made something from nothing and I've been creative. Um, I was attracted to drag because I saw a drag show where someone did a number as Lumpy Space Princess from Adventure Time and they did My Humps but the Alanis Morissette version (laughs) and it was like a ballad (laughs) version and then they just moved around the stage and they started shaking their body really weird. It was very one dumb (laughs) two it was very nerdy it was very 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 nerdy and three it did not take itself too seriously and those are the the things like those are like kind of like my main point to live my life is to be like irreverently nerdy um, not take yourself seriously and to be dumb you know and that's what attracted me to drag and that's kind of what made me realize that drag is less of like female impersonation and it's more of like breaking down gender binaries and kind of like it's an it's a performative art like expressive performative art um and i i started doing drag with the intention of going more in a cartoon 
uh, like a cartoony route and like with, with big eyes and, and uh, anime silhouettes and numbers that people won't understand. So that's, yeah, that, that's typically long-winded answer. That's how I got into drag. <laughs> that's awesome. Love it. And then, and then the and road then to, did, go ahead, Jai. Yeah. No, I'm just like, how did you end up on RuPaul's Drag Race? Uh, they called the wrong person, and I just happened. My n <laughs> phone number is one off from the person uh, that was on the list. Uh, I just also happened to be Asian too, so they checked off that. They're like, you know, one Pacific <laughs> Islander for the for the season, and yeah, she'll be fine. Whatever, um, as long as we can pronounce her name. <laughs> and <they> oh, <laughs> and that. <laughs> well, Rock, you've done a good job with that so far. Exactly. Yes, Rock. Thank you. Yeah, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> We're winking for those of you listening to the audio version right now. That was an audio uh, audible wink, right? <laughs> an audible wink. Um, Ding! It's an ASMR wink. I have very wet eyes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Always crying. But um, on the inside. yeah, I basically I ended up getting on a drag race because drag as an art form has changed so much over the course of well five years since I you know I. Um, first started performing drag and and since drag races even started um, drag has really just kind of grown and evolved into this bigger thing that has like subcultures in it and different queens are represented all over the world I ended up I feel like I ended up on drag race because one I have a lot of charisma but two I do represent a niche culture in um, uh, you know in the drag scene and they and and you're awesome, right? Yeah, and they're also we need we need someone whose IQ is uh, double digits. So <laughs> I was just I was just the right person to call. I I believe that is uh is what they call shade, right? Is that what you just did? Uh yes yes okay good C yes yes congratulations good That's job what, good job thank Katie. you recognize shade <laughs> there is a lot of shade in D and D. You know that there's shade going on. Just no one, nobody says that it's shade. I'm sure that it has. Um, is there a cast shade? Should I make? Yeah, you should make that spell. Okay, I should oh. make that spell. There is a bard spell, uh, which I've always loved, is, uh, oh, I'm forgetting the name of it, but it is basically uh, a cantrip that, that insults someone so badly that they take psychic damage, which is basically shade. Right? <laughs> that is, yeah, that is essentially, that is, that is to the T what shade is. God, why am I forgetting what that what that bard cantrip is? Someone in chat tell me. Um, Please tell me because I want to know what it is too. Is that the is it vicious mockery? Yes, vicious mockery. That's it. Yeah, vicious mockery it's, does sound exactly like what shade is. Yeah. Yeah. It's and it's like I mean another way to put it is like roasting. Right. Yes, but not in good fun. Uh, yeah, not in good fun. I mean, I guess shade is in good fun. Um, you throw shade kind of when you are, I feel like, in a comfortable space with someone. Like, shade isn't always... Actually, that's not true. You can throw shade at someone when you really don't like them. <laughs> it it is, goes back it and is, forth. It is psychological warfare. It is. It, it is. is. Yeah, uh, but with someone's, but with someone's uh, bad shoes. <laughs> Oh. Were you uh you were a guest on Matt Baum's uh Queens of Adventure as well, right? I was. Yes. Yes, that was so fun. They're awesome. I uh we've that. seen uh uh their show their live shows uh here in Seattle um mm -hmm. and uh he's he I, he's been on the podcast I think. So it's been yeah. super it's fun to uh yeah, and it's a really good DM and I love how they incorporate you know the drag performances within the story, the context of the story. It makes it so much fun. It is, um, it's one of those things too, where, uh, it really, his show really brings together drag culture and Dungeons and Dragons humor, and it turns it into something different. And the, my, my main thing is I love to watch drag queens play D and D that don't know how the game is played. Yes. And I, I feel like a lot of my appeal for the, or a lot of what draws me to the game is people that play it really bad and struggle and try to get out using their charisma. I feel, yes. I always like things that kind of um, uh, make fun of the structure of the game, you know? 
So when queens don't know how to play, it's great. <laughs> it, it's like, it's more entertaining to see, see queens playing that don't know how to play than anyone else in my my I don't know what it, maybe it is like the because they they lean so heavily on charisma they just become more creative but it's like I I, I could watch that forever and ever. oh yeah me too well that's also why I like to impede people's um impede people's progress because when I do play with other queens um they usually take it very seriously like goals and objectives and it's too it's very cut and dry like we got to get this over with and I'm like no you're gonna stay here and we're gonna figure out this problem because I just made another problem for you. You're not leaving this chair until we finish this campaign, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> finish your lunchable. Finish your lunchable, uh, Becky. <laughs> are you ever, have you ever DM'd or do you have any interest in, in being a dungeon master? Because the more we talk, I, the more I'm, I'm curious what your style would be like. <laughs> I would love to be a DM, but I have never DM'd before, before, mostly because DMing requires a lot of preparation with, um, I feel like uh, it's a lot of preparation and understanding and a lot of reading material, like knowing what you're going to present to people, kind of having a logic. You know, I have a lot of charisma and I can build a story, but um, kind of having all those facts is so hard for me. I would freeze up if I had everything in front of me. I would follow, if I have it in front of me, I follow the rules in the books too much, which is why like I try to stay away from that realm. I mean, but I, who knows? Maybe I'll give it a try. Um, we all got to fail once. <laughs> it, yeah. Shelly, you can speak to all that, right? Yeah. Have you, yeah. Have you guys had bad DM experiences? Oh, I have. Is it like and open then, mic night where you choke and? Y yes, a thousand percent. It's exactly, and like the audience is just staring at you, and then there's some quiet like shoot her up the stage in the back. Oh like, my god! Usually just in your head. Really said that they didn't say it, but I like felt it. I felt the energy in the room. You can feel like, their eyes. They're like, um, I I'm using my lunch hour for this. Oh my god. <laughs> This is that's what drag is like too when you bomb oh. and you're on the microphone and it literally is just like get this done as soon as possible. But when you're hosting, so that that happens when you're on the microphone, you're hosting a show, you get the next girls on stage. Um when you bomb on the mic, you could easily just be like, "All right, DJ, play the next track and then get the next girl on." Yeah. When you DM, you can't do that. You're stuck there, okay? You have players' Here, lives in your hands. Can you incorporate a DJ? <laughs> I don't have one. Oh. Bard, play us out. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I would just say, okay, so then you guys, you hear this this music coming from a tavern, and you're going to go listen for a minute. And then I would just like go, like, call somebody or go through the book or Google, like, what do I do? Ooh, oh, okay, uh, can you believe that Lady Gaga is playing in this tavern right now? So weird. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I don't yeah. know what's going on with me. It's I'm drunk. Uh, <laughs> it is similar it also to helps that when you do drag performances, it is in a bar. So um typically yes. by the time the performance comes on, people are more persuaded mm -hmm. to uh they're plastered, um, to give you money and to clap and scream. Because That's they're, what they're there for they're because it's warped. So <laughs> As a, I, I, I did stand up comedy for a little while and bombing while doing that. You're right, very right. When you're in a, oh. uh, a bar environment that's everyone's there for the express purpose of, you know, getting plastered and, and, and uh, listening to something to make you funny, when that bombs, it's terrible. It's an awful feeling. But my worst experience was ah. trying to do stand up at a wedding. At like a wedding. At a wedding? At a wedding. That was asked to do it. Walk into it or. Were you invited? I was invited ah, as okay. a friend and then also be like, hey, we're going to have a whole bunch of performances. And uh, it would it went immediately terrible. And I did the thing that you just <laughs> did where I was like, and uh, we are going to transition into toast. We're just going to toast. And everyone. Like, All right. Can we get uh, them kissing now? Yep. Okay. Bright and green. Oh, uh, can you go make out, please? OK, goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just eat. I'll just drink all of the, the, mar the apple wedding. martinis. <laughs> That's maybe horrible. Maybe you thought you did. But oh no! It was bad. Did they no, tell right. you? The I look I no because I like I told like two jokes and f completely flat and the the uh, bride's father who had traveled all the way from Israel to be at the wedding, I I distinctly remember him. His body posture was just like, 
Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, what all right. Was, were you offensive? What did you say? I don't even remember what the joke was, but it was, it was, I think I did the, the stupid thing <laughs> where I was like, I'm going to make jokes that are like, not necessarily making fun of the institution of marriage, but definitely, you know. <laughs> That's the best thing you could do. Look at these two idiots. I did it the exact wrong tact. It's, uh, it's and, like, uh, and um, you know, uh, what's it called? Um, hindsight is 2020 yes yeah. so i wrote the wrong there, material you're like, this is gonna kill <laughs> and then you get booed off the stage at a wedding there's there's 25 people here yep they're already drunk and then <laughs> still not laughing at your institution they just want to dance just they just want to hear the exactly people and do some ymca the only good yeah. part about this was that i was able to turn that into material that i did on stage later that ended up killing uh there you go talking about my awful experience everything is fodder yeah trash into treasure honestly Mm -hmm. part of comedy or uh improv is um the less the more you try to like avoid your mistakes and your like social faux pas you know during your set uh the more awkward it is but if you if you're able to do it in a way that you can reference that humor and make it funny it really spins a good like a bad situation into a good one and that's one of the things that you you learn as a a comedian uh, as an improver as a performer is how to make your not so strong points or to take your like your stuttering or your flubs on the microphone and turn it into something that's really fun yeah it's because in some ways comedy is about um creating tension Right. Oh, you, yeah. You need to create tension in order to have the punchline. Right. And so the tension of screwing up is, is is great as long as you can then turn it into something that feels like, oh, I can I can let people laugh now, not feel awkward for you. They can laugh exactly. at like, oh, this yeah, person is aware soft. of what's happening. And, and, and you know, you can be in, in on the joke. The worst. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how did you bomb DMing? Me? Oh, um, so it's I I did a lot of preparation or so I thought. Um, but I did so much preparation to the point where I, I didn't anticipate that the players might do something different than what I planned for. Uh And they immediately, like, I was like, everything that I, that I planned is like right over here to the left. And they like, they were like, okay, we're going to go to the right. And then I was like, oh, like this. (laughs) Oh God. I don't know what's to the right. And instead of being like, okay, like everything that I planned is now to the right i just was like okay what the hell is gonna happen here oh my God. <laughs> how do i get i and i it was it was stupid like the whole story was dumb and like <laughs> everything i planned was dumb and like I'm i saw sure their like sad faces great. and they were like oh, they were so kind but i i hated like the pity of like oh, she's trying like, oh my god how hard she's trying and she's really sucking but we're gonna smile and just say it's okay and it's not okay it's that's not when okay. you put the that's when you put the partitions up like that and you're like i'm just gonna look at my <laughs> really quick. And then, i would just like put on a cloak and just you see like, this can you figure can you guys excuse like me for, for just one minute just please like... <laughs> <laughs> yep yep what's yep. so hard i can see you <laughs> okay we're back <laughs> Hi. Thank you, there's, there's so many parts. Way to commit to the bit. I think I would love, but I was too scared to really to ever try it again, which is why um, we have the irony here is that we have a segment on Dragon Pal called How to Be a Dungeon Master. And I uh, interview really talented dungeon masters to try oh. to, you know, to get inspiration and, and tips. And that we have a segment as part of this show today oh. that is actually about game preparation. From, oh, a, yay. from a gentleman who wrote a book called The Lazy DM. So oh, wow. apparently, like, we can DM and not actually, like, have to do as much work as we both think we have. Good. The Lazy DM sounds like something that I've gotten a lot of in the past few weeks. <laughs> 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 I've gotten a lot of Lazy DMs. They get right to the point. I don't, I'm not sure if that's being forward or... <laughs> you guys gotta got to work for it. <laughs> It's, Seriously. it's not even an eggplant. That's like a, <laughs> a piece of kale. <laughs> it's just the egg. It's just the egg. I mean, it's just, a, just one egg, a fried egg emoji. 
you know, it's it's so easy to get creepy messages sometimes when you are a drag performer or if you okay. are a nerd girl. It is easy to for people to feel like, hey, you're someone of interest that I find like attractive. So here is a DM. Here is your <laughs> invite. And people No. No, dude. Does that work? Does it work for anyone? No. Uh, it has never worked know. for anyone in the history of time. In fact, you are just wasting a perfectly badly lit picture of your nether regions on me right now. So <laughs> save it for another day. Save it for your doctor. <laughs> okay. Save it for your doctor. Did you should write back. Did you mean to send this to your doctor? Well, sometimes. <laughs> maybe sometimes you meant I, That's where the shade comes DM. in. Vicious I, uh, mockery the heck out of that. I usually send a picture of scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Stop uh, this. Dude. So it takes a lot for me to block you though. <laughs> social media is, you know, you're right. There's <laughs> there's lots of uh, this is my this yeah. is my attempt at a, at a uh, 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 you know, a segue. Um, the segue master. Uh, social media is going to be an important part of reality RP. Uh, and oh, I know you've been working a lot that? with Ryan yeah. Omega, one of the designers on getting uh, stuff together for this fun thing that's going on through D&D Live 2020. First of all, thanks for, for you know agreeing to be a part of it. But I know we don't want to talk about uh, secrets of the character or things like that. But what's, what's it been like working on this and, and getting ready for unveiling next week? Well, I have to say that I'm very excited for this event because not only is it... Um, it's it's so new for all of us who are playing, you know, this live action role play through social media. But there is so much work and care that has gone into the world, the characters and um, like our, our challenges that we're doing. And the format of the show really makes it interesting and really kind of sh shakes up, um, kind of shakes up uh, RPing right now and um that's i mean that's what role playing is all about is introducing new things that make it fun and fresh so i'm i'm really excited for you guys to see all of these characters i have new outfits uh, i have a new outfit already planned for this character um are you using new makeup too no same makeup same makeup uh, <laughs> that's okay no that's all right no I'd... it's 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 new we want we want to know who you are Oh, uh, exactly. Uh, my my Your thing look is, is very signature. It's I can't change it because if I if I add one ounce less of eyeliner, people just think that I'm not trying. <laughs> They're like, hey, she got lazy. Why does she look like a lady today? You're like, I don't oh. to mix it up. I don't want to look like a clown all the time. <laughs> um, like a but lady. This whole experience is also very daunting too, especially coming on as. You know, like, um, like D and D isn't. Um, I don't consider myself like the best RPer. Like, I still need a lot of practice, um, and I want to do my best, especially like representing the drag community. So, I just want to make sure that I make a fun and interesting show. That is my main goal is to create something that people will want to watch and that are, people are actively engaged in. Me too. Yeah. And that's really exciting. I think, you know, people being able to uh, interact with these characters in a way that you're right. We've never done anything like this before. I don't know if anything like this has been kind of presented out there, but I'm, I'm really interested to see how the audience responds to, uh, you know, the information that you guys will be uh, putting out there and, uh, you know, as well as things that they can discover on their own and work together uh, to to really kind of see how what happens when these these challenges go uh, and yeah, it's it's Trust it's. Me, it could, it, uh, I'm excited to see it too. How this turns out, this could easily turn into a uh, um a stand up at a wedding. <laughs> 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 you know, um, but sometimes people people choose the right path. And you got to you got to figure it out on the way. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And you, I, like you said, taking risks is, is a big part of, uh, you know, any new thing that is put out there creatively. So that's that's what we're trying to do here. And the question is, will this end my career? And the answer is definitely. <laughs> We've so, already established okay that. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's as well on as my character sheet. Is this. <laughs> 
career and at end of campaign. Is this <laughs> that something that is a plot that needs to happen sometime in the campaign? I think this is going to open all sorts of new doors for me. I think so too. And possibly DMs. Well, I yeah, definitely. There I mean I'm already getting DMs from DMs. <laughs> Is that? Hold on. I'm thinking. Is there's there a, a joke, joke there. In there. Yeah, there's yeah. totally a joke there's, there. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'll figure it out by the end of the podcast. Stand on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm excited to see the, the. I've actually seen a picture of what your character looks like too. So I I, I can't wait for uh, yeah, everyone else to kind of see that. Oh my god, you must love Photoshop. I, <laughs> Did you do it in Photoshop? No. No, I took the picture and um, I made my features a little bit more flattering here on my chin because being inside, I have taken um, quite the liking to uh, cheese it, uh, potato uh, oh, chips, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, a certain chicken in a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to take care of yourself. Have, yeah. you, have you have you gained the COVID nineteen like I have? Did you get COVID nineteen? No, but I've gained it in my my weight region. Body. Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, he's sick. <laughs> no, Somebody just, help right him! Now. I have gained nineteen <laughs> pounds. In, I, in, oh, uh, the it, COVID nineteen nineteen pounds. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, like the freshman um, fifteen, right? That's that was a yes. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, quarantine fifteen. <laughs> maybe more, maybe less. <laughs> I. I gained. We're um, all in it. I gained some of the body mass that uh, is like the. I gained the complete body mass of some of the contestants on my season. <laughs> um, <laughs> if we divided myself by weight into RuPaul's Drag Race contestants, I'm probably two and a half. <laughs> that is not true. That is, that is, that is very true. Definitely not after this interview because you've been squatty pottying this whole time. So yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, I've been sitting. Was that even in the interview? <laughs> was that captured in the podcast? We were talking about squatty potty before well, we, this. We, brought, we definitely brought it up while we were doing okay, the Okay, I've been on the squatty potty this whole time, you guys. <laughs> One continuous string. I'm broken. Got to do what you got to do. Yeah, it's like Glenn. I'm like I'm like a fish. <laughs> what? <laughs> D and D How? stands for do and do. Oh, like doo doo. Uh, 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 I know a six year old in the other room that's going to love that joke. He's covered in Nutella, so he'll probably really appreciate this. Or do do. <laughs> or do do. Hard, hard, hard to tell the difference. <laughs> do you play uh, D and D with your kids? Yeah, I've played a, a couple of times uh, trying to do more. My uh, my six year old uh, uh, doesn't want me to dungeon master. She she wants to do it herself. And oh, so okay, I thought she was like, you, you suck, Dad. It's more of a control <laughs> thing. She's more of a like, master. I want to be want Shelly. Yeah, will she you stop killing off my character, Dad? I'm sorry I didn't clean my room. <laughs> will you clean your room, Fiona? And eat that raisin <laughs> bran while you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, it, it, it is super uh, fun to get them into that imaginary role play thing. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're still playing with dolls and stuffed animals and things like that and doing their own role playing, uh, you know, in play. And so having it more focused when it's about the fantasy role playing is, is always fun. And they're looking for more time to do it. Hopefully when well, I get less busy. It's really important to kind of like develop a child's imagination and also just keep it um, keep it well into like their like early development and like um like teenage years i feel like uh imagination and role playing and rping is really important for problem solving especially Agreed. in everyday life and it's a valuable skill to have in like the workplace or uh in a work environment like adaptability being able to tell a narrative and being able to actively work with people yes and yeah. numbers being able to read the room and respond to the different personalities is Oh yeah, very, very positive trait. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about. So I always think about like playing D and D with my son. Like mm -hmm. we would be the, the dungeon master, he would be the player. But lately, I've been thinking, maybe we should have him take on the role yeah. of dungeon master. That would be so cool. There, like, ex especially now that there's like there's so much influx, and even though he's only you know six, he still recognizes things are different. Like obviously, he's like I haven't been to school in four months. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> Yeah. But um, 
I feel like it's a long weekend. It's <laughs> been a really long weekend that they may need to have some sort of like semblance of control over the world. Yeah. And they could maybe cool. get that from being the dungeon master. Like, you know, it's a safe way for them to exert control on mom and dad. This, this is what's called a thesis. And should then I, should I should I keep yeah, I definitely think you should. Okay. What would also be a good show, especially for I don't know, like maybe like uh like a kids like a kids like if you had a kid themed like Dungeons and Dragons show where it's like kid DMs and like really good like RPers are the characters in it. You know, I I love I'm exploring. Be the DM. Yeah, I I, I feel like kids have a lot of like imagination and they're good at improv because they're they're literally just starting to think of everything so and they're fearless about it like they'll just like they don't have the, the i'm gonna bomb at at a wedding phobia or like, <laughs> and, you know, like they we're gonna they don't, they don't that care wedding. like they don't have that like I'm, I'm gonna fail at this or everyone's gonna laugh at me or they're just they're just like okay i i'll tell you what's behind that door oh yeah it's the poop monster ha <laughs> And he throws They've been playing a lot of my games. Uh, I had <laughs> yeah. a character die because we couldn't get out of a room and there were bats like flying at the top of the room and they just kept pooping. And then we drowned in guano. So um, turns out oh. I should have just tried to open the door twice. I learned a valuable lesson that day. You know what that I was is. like, oh, try it once, it learn. didn't work. As long as no one casts try, fireball try in that room, you should be okay. They did cast fireball. In that oh room. no! Was just... <laughs> You're like, it stays here. <laughs> it's just nonstop burning. <laughs> oh my god! Well, fire. <laughs> <laughs> well. And you still didn't try the door. And I still didn't try the door. I was like, that door is a lie. We it's gotta dig that. our way out. <laughs> Swim through the poo. Let's get out of this and Nutella. Oh wait, it's not Nutella. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's that's when I was still playing male characters. So <laughs> that was um, I I think that character was um, a man who was abandoned in the woods and was raised by uh, chickadees, like small birds. Oh. And oh. so I would communicate mainly through like a series of like tweeting and like and like hand gestures so it was very um it was not well thought through <laughs> that's very hard to do an <laughs> entire campaign about like communication. that so um it's funny in the moment but then you can't you can't uh renege back on it later <laughs> you're you gotta commit yeah you gotta commit i got on that table <laughs> tweety bird yeah, just like a bird. <laughs> well, I, I think your reality RP character is not uh, an Aarakocra or a Kenku, uh, as far as I know. So uh, you don't have that uh, to look forward to. You know a lot to. of birds, too. <laughs> those are, yeah, those are two bird-like ra bird races, uh, or at least the ones that have wings uh, here in Dungeons & Dragons. But we are excited about uh, you know showing off everything with reality RP as well as D&D &D Live 2020. I can't wait. Rock'em Sakura, thank you so much for being here and being awesome uh, and playing D&D &D in this community. I'm glad, uh, you know, just real quick, your experiences that you had early on, I'm glad that it's 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 not like that anymore. And, and we yeah. want to welcome you with open arms to the D&D &D community. And I hope this is just the start of more thank and more you. fun I, stuff you can do with us. I feel so welcome. And, and this podcast has been so fun. You guys have been very welcoming to me. And I, I feel very confident about this um this is live Yay! rp Yay! we're gonna have so much fun uh how can people uh find out more about what you're doing uh you know rupaul's drag race all the above Where, when's your next show so if you would like to um oh first off uh reality rp you know you can join us for that live rp event um you can also follow me on twitter at rockam sakura instagram at rockam sakura I do not have any live appearances coming up besides that. But if you follow me on the, my social media accounts, then we will definitely be doing um, more um, Zoom-based live shows. Um, I have a Pokemon show uh, in development, and I also have a Steven Universe show in development, too. Oh, cool. 
So oh, if, awesome. you know, stay tuned, follow and um, uh, uh, follow your dreams. <laughs> Good advice. Good follow advice. Your dreams. Thank don't you eat so raisin much. Bran. This is awesome. Like, uh, and I can't wait for more. Don't do it. No, don't listen to her. Don't eat raisin brands. With lots I, of sugar. It's not that bad. I true, true, true. I'm gonna go no, get just some. Eat sugar. Yeah, just have the sugar. That's you know what, what I like to do. Cut it's out my the coffee. middle man. Just go for the sugar. Mm -hmm. Cut out the middle man and just die. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about the diabetes part of it. Just go right don't to the about other part. Suffering. <laughs> just, just. I already dug a, a grave. Just jump in. <laughs> and on that note, uh, I think that's no the rules. perfect uh, end of this interview. <laughs> You are a delight. I'm jumping in as soon as we're done. Thank you. You guys have been so wonderful. Thank you, you so too. much for having me. You're the best. Uh, see, see you the in. RP plays out. Me too. Girl, it is, it is going to be my wedding. <laughs> it is. I swear. Stand, stand up, up, at, a up at a wedding. I'm going to fall. <laughs> no, you're okay. going to be awesome. Nope. Th Bye, thank Rocco. you. Is it okay to hang up? It is. Bye. Yep. Okay. Thank, thank you again, you. guys. You have a wonderful day. It's a day. pleasure.